You're listening to Cancer Convos with Brady and Stacy. Uh, welcome to the second edition of Cancer Convos, sponsored by uh. nobody. <laughs> sponsored by nobody right now but that's what? a great opportunity to like do whatever you want to do you know what i mean like this is this show's all open it's a free for all baby yeah it's I all told, open uh, heather, i told heather i was going to do that i was going to say cancer Convo is sponsored by pause 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 nothing's there so hopefully <laughs> someone says that'd be a great spot to be because they say it at the beginning and it's cancer Convo is sponsored by through the whole thing like that's yeah. what it is so. yes and then at the end, we say the same thing. This has been Cantor Convos, sponsored by. Insert you. your business here. Insert your business or businesses right here. Yeah, I mean, it could be three or four, but we don't even care. Yeah. Um, so last week, we, fact, we kind a little of bit prefer of, that. Yes, correct. We get yeah. 10 of them. Uh, last yeah. week, we chat a little bit about, uh, you know, just the uh, journey of what we found out and how we found out and what we've done. Um, today, I want to kind of hit on like the medical little part of it Mm. yeah that's the fun part yeah because i you know i know there's grants and there's things you can probably sign up for and you know have people get for you and whatever but it's just such a i don't know such a a bunch of hoops to jump through to try to get it so it's not easy the thing about left on the lurch for all of it yeah and the thing about when you go through something like cancer or any long-term illness that you're going to have for the rest of your life basically it's not like a lot of people are like, Hey, here's, a, I need a, I'm going to do a GoFundMe to like, um, because I broke my arm and I can't work yeah. for a week. You know what I mean? There's an end to that strife. Like there's an end to it. That's you, you get through that point in time, you're healed up and you're done. But with long-term illnesses like cancer or I suppose like ALS or, you know, like other long-term illnesses like that, yeah. it's constant. So you can't really do a GoFundMe for your entire life. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Hey, it's Next. my monthly GoFundMe. Yes, exactly. Is there a, 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 a reciprocating GoFundMe? I can just keep going on, you know, a monthly thing here, pay this month. But yeah. Right. If I would have had like um, a GoFundMe after every surgery I had the past year and a half, I'd have had to set up eight GoFundMe's. Yeah. Always. And I, and people don't want to deal with that, that, that your friends and family and the generosity of strangers should not be responsible for your medical bills. Correct. They just they shouldn't be too. Yeah. They everybody, everybody too. has struggles. Everybody has struggles and oh my God. And I can understand if it's like a one and done kind of a situation. Yeah. Uh, but, if, but if, um, if it's continuous, if it's continuous, and, there's no end in sight. You know, and it's just, you know, it's hard because, you know, the medical, I guess, uh, business just doesn't, yeah. they're, there, they're there to help you. And then you, you got to pay them and their rates and stuff is, ex, you know, extraordinary. And you can never yeah. get caught up. Um, our son, my son, Max, was it two years ago? Yeah. You know, had a seizure and then the life flight him to uh, Cleveland Hospital. We got that bill for that it was like $56,000. Yeah, I was talking with Heather about that when I saw her. And that's just yeah. like, that's insane. That's absolutely they, insane. They want, like, I think it was less than a month ago, they called and said, well, how do we get that money? Well, you're not. Like, we don't have $56,000. <laughs> well, your insurance only paid so much. Let's get on the phone. So Heather's on the phone with, like, insurance. Yeah. The people from the helicopter company and someone else, right, trying to figure out how to get their money. And they're like, we can't give you any more. The insurance is what it is. But that's, yeah. so what do you do? Like, you're just sitting, we're not going to pay it. They're either going to, I don't know, write it off or however they do it. I have no idea, but that's just life. And so, you know, with our situations and everybody else that has, like you said, a long-term illness, what do you do? You try to keep up. I remember calling one time, I said, I'll give you 50 bucks bucks a month. And I did it for three months in a row. And then the the fourth month, I got a full bill again. And I called and I said, hey, I thought I was on a three-month plan, on a $50 a month plan. And the gal on the phone says, no, that's only for three months. We can only do it for three months. (laughs) So I said, so you'd rather get nothing then get $50 a month and I try to pay this off. Well, if that's what you want to do with, sir, do you have a credit card? No, I'm not going to give you my no. credit card. Yeah. yeah, and we're not going to do this whole automatic take it out of my account thing because yeah. I've heard horror stories about that as well. People who have signed up for automatic withdrawal of like 75 or or $100 a month or whatever they agreed on and all of a sudden the hospital takes out $3,000. Yeah. 
And then yeah. none of their other bills went through and they're absolutely broke. And the hospital's like, well, we needed that money. Oh, it, it just, I mean, it just sucks because I mean, you're so worried about just your recovery that the stress of that, and, and it's a lifelong thing. So if you miss a payment for the next, I don't know. And I, the thing is, I, I know in my heart and I know on paper, I'm going to have to rack up medical bills for the next, I don't even know how long I'm going to have to have a surgery every three months for, I don't know, until I have a big major surgery again, where they can get rid of the scar tissue. So every three months, it's like, Hey, $2,000. So, Hey, here's another three months. Here's $2,000. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's going to be that ongoing thing all the time. I'm never, ever going to be out of debt. Correct. Ever. And because if you miss one payment, then your credit sucks. So I will probably never get a loan for anything else for the rest of my life, which means if my car breaks down and I need a new car, I can't, I'm not going to be able to get a loan. I'm just not going to be able to get a loan. And it's not of my fault. I've worked for, I've worked every day of my life pretty much since I've been 14, 15 years old. Um, so it's not for lack of working. It's not for lack of making money. It's just constant, constant debt. Like it's just, I'm never going to get out from under it. And it's not even a debt that I've incurred like this. I, I didn't choose cancer. I didn't choose to get sick. Like I didn't want this to happen. I, it's not something that I could have even prevented. Like, it's not like I went on a crazy shopping spree and bought $40,000 $40,000 worth of stuff or $50,000 worth of stuff on a credit card. I had to go in to save my life. And now if I miss one payment, I'm not going to be able to get a loan for anything for the rest of my life. Yeah. I'm just not. It's a, it's a burden and you can't, not only the physical, mental, but then the financial and yeah. the emotional and everything else, because what are you going to do? You have nothing to, nothing to turn to. No. Um, and you're right. Friends and generosity and family generosity can go so far and thank God for those people. Um, I know when I had my first bout back in 2014, a bunch of people I was working with at the casino just donated a ton of money. Like it was, you know, 800 bucks. Yeah. From people you know, just work with. Like, it's just awesome. Yeah. But I don't expect that. Hey, I'm going back in again. Where's my $800? Like, it's just not, it's just not practical, you know? Um, and I have and a friend again, who's, who's going through the same thing with rheumatoid arthritis. So he has rheumatoid arthritis and, um, he's a personal trainer. So if he has a bad week and can't train his clients, he just doesn't get paid and there's no backup to that. But what's he going to do? Ask for a GoFundMe at this, this country, you should be able to live your life without having to worry about, you know, like, um, if, if I get into a car accident or I have a long-term illness pop up, am, am I going to be able to continue on with my life? I mean, because solely of the medical debt, I pay my house, I pay my property taxes, I paid for my car, I pay for gas, I paid for private school for my kids, I feed my kids, I pay the electric, I pay, but there's certain things you just can't help. And it's a God-given right to be able to survive an illness. You know what I mean? You shouldn't, yeah. I don't know, the whole system's just broken. Well, it is. And it's, you know, it's until they fix that, that's just never going to happen. I mean, we, we've, we've lived long enough to know that the, the rich get richer and the middle and lower class are just sitting there fighting to try to survive. And that's just what it yeah. is. And it sucks. You know, how do you fix it? No clue. Just keep plugging away. You know, just yeah. be positive about it. Um, so I just try not to this... future trip about it is what I do. I, yeah. I, no, 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 if no. you look at the long term of it, like it's, yeah. It's just, it, it would tend, I, I can't afford mental health counseling because of these yeah. medical bills. So I just try not to think about it. <laughs> well, the, the, the sad news of it is it, it, it just never ends. Like it just yeah. until, I mean, even if you're cured and they find it, there's a chance that it could come back and you don't, you don't know. I don't. Um, yeah. You know, you just don't like, even with my stuff now, like tomorrow I'm going in for an appointment because the thyroid cancer moved to my lungs in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. It was on the right side. They radiated it last year. It, that tumor is now smaller, but now it's found a spot on my left side of my lungs. So that's gotten bigger since the last time I had radiation. So I'm going in tomorrow to chat with my radiation doctor to see what we can do to pinpoint that side. Um, it's a pain in the ass because every time I do something to get outside or do something with, with 
you know, coaching Bianca's basketball team, if I like, walk across the floor, I just start hacking because yeah. I think there's a tumor in there in my lung that doesn't help. Um, it's impeding on your breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And I want, and I want to, like, I want to do things, but then there's that back in the back of your mind thinking, well, if I do this, I'm going to start hacking again. And that's not any fun. You know? Yeah. So anyway, so that's, you know, it's just, it's just the sad, the sad part of it is that there's, there's never an end to it. And you know, we have friends and family and support staff and everything else. Here's what I really wish. Life. There's a lot of like cancer organizations, but there's nobody that helps people. They get hundreds of thousands of, if not millions of dollars millions. in donations every year, but they don't help anybody financially. Like I'll get gas cards every now and then from like the American Cancer Society. And I didn't even apply my doctors. Apparently my oncologist doctors get them for oh. patients. And so, um, I'll get a Senex gift certificate every couple of months. But I think if you ask any cancer patient, if they could pick one thing in the world to offer as a service, it would be financial support. Yeah. And there's a lot of these these organizations that do fundraisers and they, they, uh, the, you know, the, um, I'm not, I'm not going to single any out, but there's like, a, there's like, I know of at least four or five different like cancer organizations that help survivors, but don't help serve. You know what I mean? Like they, they might provide a wig here and there or a scarf here and there. But if you ask me, would I rather have a scarf or money to survive, I'm going to pick the money to survive uh, nine times out of 10. Um, or they don't even help with like treatment costs. I don't even care if you give me a check. Can you somehow underwrite some of my cancer treatments? Like, can you pay for half of the chemotherapy or can you pay for a portion of the surgery? Like people are giving these, these cancer organizations money to help cancer patients. And what they're doing is they're giving out scarves or wigs or gas cards or whatever, where, where in the hell does the rest of the money go? Yeah. Well, and you know, even like you said, like a financial assistance portion of it, like say, Hey, here's a person that can help you get up on a payment plan or something through your house, your hospital or, or yeah. insurance that is um, attainable and intelligent, not yeah. $2,000 a month. Like, you know, it's just, you got to live, you know? Yeah. Um, and exactly. I hate those phone calls because there's like a, it's a no win so hey don't forget you listen to cancer convos sponsored by your in your name here uh with brady and stacy um yeah it's uh it's just a, it's just a, a really tough thing in the financial part of it but what i know do you, do? I I, you know we don't, we're not gonna have an answer today no it's not we're not but... gonna have an answer ever <laughs> Our no. GoFundMe is basically this show. We're trying to use this show to pay off some of our our medical bills. And um, that's a, as good as we're going to be able to do. You just got to kind of do for yourself, I guess, because it's apparent nobody can help. No, yeah. no one can help you. And uh, as we said last show, down the line, we're going to have guests and uh, survivors and, you know, people that have lost loved ones uh, in the past. We'll chat with those folks and talk and talk about, you know, just some, you know, get it out, just talk it out and, and have some fun on the show as well. Um, uh, we did lose a, a friend this last week to cancer, uh, George Corey Welder. Which yeah, was man, that shocking was shocking to me. Yeah. Right out of the blue. You, you sent that, like I saw on your, on the Facebook URL site and I was like, Holy Hannah, I had no idea he had cancer. No. So nobody did. So a lot of people are, are asking like, what did, did you know? Like what, what happened? Um, I guess, and um, not to let, not to like put a lot of his story out there, but it was about January. I think he went in for, I don't know what made him decide to go in, but he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And so a lot of people said, you know, he didn't look, you know, I talked to him. I didn't say he seemed fine and he, he didn't look sick and he didn't lose his hair, that beautiful mane of hair. Yes. Um, I think by the time he was diagnosed in January, there was nothing they could do. And so at that point in time, he just knew that that was going to be it. And I don't think he told hardly anybody. I don't think he told, but of course his, his really close family and maybe one or two friends, that was it. Literally it. He didn't tell anybody. I kind of had an inkling, um, 
last week or the week before the week before because I guess he he passed away uh Monday so it was a week ago today um the week before that he had posted something about like it was a status that a ton of people have shared about getting their cancer diagnosis and you know um, you've lived a good life, blah, blah, blah. Share this on your page. If you know somebody that's battled cancer. Well, I figured, I figured, um, he was just posting it to support all the people that he knew had cancer. I didn't right. think he had cancer. So I, I almost reached out to him to say, Hey, thanks for posting that G. And, you know, I haven't talked to you in a while. Is everything going okay? And I didn't. And I regret that because I feel like I saw that for a reason. And I should have called him to ask. And I, I didn't. And it's like, you just, man, it was quick diagnosed in January and already passed like four months, four months, man. And I have to say, like, I, I feel that I feel so incredibly lucky when I went in, they said, if I had waited probably two or three more weeks, that would have been me. There would have been nothing they could do for me. So they would have been talking about like, a care plan to keep me comfortable versus a cure plan to get rid of it, to make me cancer free. And so it's like, it's nothing to mess with. It's crazy. And there's, so there's so many, like, it's just like, yeah. you know, mine was a goiter in my neck that turned into something that you was know, touching my thyroid. Yeah. Um, you know, you talk about George, something that was in his shoulder and it moved. And they said it was lung cancer. Like it just, it just, like you said, I think you said last week, it just finds a spot wants to live. Mm -hmm. And that's just where it goes. There's no rhyme or reason to it. And that, you know, you talk about all these companies that have all this money for research and everything else. Well, what the hell's going on? Like, why? I, mean, it's, it's I don't huge. know, man. And then another one of our friends was recently di recently diagnosed with um, kidney cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if he's made it public yet, so I'm not going to, but no. one of our close friends, um, he was just recently diagnosed with kidney cancer. And then three weeks ago, or maybe four weeks ago, it would have been maybe a month ago, I lost another friend to ovarian cancer. So it's like, ah, you know, it's a, uh, it's a bad deal. <sighs> it is. So if you have yeah. any insight or input or anything you want to share with us, uh, send it over to Stacy, uh, Stacy at your radio.net. If you want to get sponsorships, things like that for this show, cancer convos, We'd love to get it on. And like I said, in the future, guests, doctors, nurses, cancer people, people that talk about wigs, whatever it is. Uh, it, yeah, just, we have a lot of great cancer, topics. Yeah. It's, it's long-term illnesses, mm -hmm. you know, um, whether it be, you know, dementia, arthritis, like you're talking about, yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have, you know, like I said, guests down the road that have either, you know, survived or have lost someone. Just talk about it. Just get it out there and have a, friendly chat every week or two or something and figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah. So that happy show today. <laughs> hey, but that's, that's the thing. Like we're just, you know, we're here to inform and, and hopefully get people to, to think about it and talk about it. And if you have, you know, get checked out for anything, whether it's prostate, anything, rest, all that stuff, just go get it checked out. Yeah, know. I always tell people it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to have a doctor say, oh, you're overreacting. It's nothing perfect than to get a diagnosis where I'm sorry, it's too late. We can't help you at all. Yeah. So. Holy moly. Where, where were you three years ago? I don't want to go in. And, I don't want to rack up any better. I told my doctor yeah. that too. When I went in, she's like, why did you wait so long to come in? You have 16 pounds of tumor in you. And those are just the big ones. You have tumors all over your body. I'm like, well, I don't know. I didn't want to rack up medical debt. Yeah, it's expensive. She goes, well, surprise. You did anyway. It's not going away. It's expensive going to the hospital. It's like going to Disneyland. Like, what am I it doing? Is. I don't want to go here. I got a budget this, for that shit. Yeah, this is the happiest place on earth. <laughs> She and she says she hates it because she hears that from so many people. Of course. It's like when they why did you wait so long to come in? And it used to be a bunch of like old like German farmers were like, well, I didn't want to have to I didn't think it was a big deal. But now yeah. it's like people are like, I didn't want to have to take on the medical debt. I can't afford the medical debt. And it's just sad that 
people would rather die than get well, than, than have said, to take out loans. As you said earlier, when you have a broken arm, you know what that is. You got a broken arm. That'll be fixed. That'll be done. Yeah. You go in and get diagnosed with cancer or some sort of long term illness. I don't know what that's going to entail. I don't want yeah. to, you know. Well, even I mean, when I got I do, diagnosed, but- yeah, I knew it was going to be like, I knew it was going to be a financial hit. I knew that. I didn't realize uh, like the extent of it. I really didn't. I Do you know that there are people that actually, when they get diagnosed with cancer, their lawyer tells them, get divorced and put your house in your husband's name or your wife's name so yeah. that you don't lose everything you have. That is terrible. That shouldn't happen. That couples that have been married for 40 years have to divorce so that they, one person could keep all of their assets in their name. So they don't lose their houses or their cars or their vacation home or their, what their, whatever it is, their plot of land. That's so sad. That's absolutely terrible. And I did have a, a lawyer friend of mine reach out and they said, you know, I don't know what what the extent of your medical debt is going to be, but it's not a bad idea to sign your house over to your kids or to Mike or whoever it is so that wow. they can't take it. Yeah. What? Oh. So what you're saying is the system's not very good. The system's not great. No, the system is not. Flawed. It's terrible. Yeah. And I don't think people understand that. Like, and no. that's not just with cancer. I think that's with a lot of when, when you're starting to rack up medical debt because of, you know, like I said, like rheumatoid arthritis or ALS, or, you know, if you have any like thing that you're Anything. spending a lot of money on. Yeah. I don't think that that even becomes a thought when I, it's just, it just shocks me. Yeah. You don't yeah. Think about it. You don't think about it. No, I did not think about that. And I no. still am not. No. <laughs> Nor have I. <laughs> You're not going to divorce post. Heather? You're not going to divorce Heather and just put everything under her name? I don't think we have anything to put under anybody's name. So really <laughs> make a difference. I'm uh, signing over my lunch gift I certificates. Yeah, I don't I don't know what, you know, you've known me for a long time, but I, I don't think uh, we've had that extraordinary life that everybody thinks we've had as the... And we're living in a in a four bedroom apartment here in Surprise, so it's not oh. like it's a palatial estate somewhere on top of Camelback Mountain. So it's okay. My uh my intern got me a twenty dollar gift card to Brick Oven. I should probably make sure that's safe with somebody. Yeah, Jeez, that's get, yeah, my only asset. Somebody. It's my only asset right now. Ty, I'm signing this over to you <laughs> just in case. Just in case they come after all of my all of my stuff for medical debt. Here's my twenty dollar Brick. Oven we heard card. that podcast. Keep She's it for me. Oven. Ty, where's that brick oven gift card? I don't know where it is. <laughs> I'm all right, Mom. I'm sorry I spent it. Well, I'm not sure. So I'm not going to trust you with my house then. <laughs> turn, yeah, turn the bright lights on. I don't know where. Here's the keys. <laughs> uh, cancer Convo is sponsored by you. Insert your business here. Yeah, let's go. Somebody. Get it done. Yeah, uh, some of the topics. Them? What's the number? What's the number? Um, 701 yep. 751-0838. 701-751-0838. That goes to URL that you can see the background URL radio. It goes there. So yeah, or you can just email me Stacy S T A C Y at URL radio.net. And cancer combos is available on um, we put the video out on Facebook. We also have the podcast out on Spotify and um, iTunes as of Friday, Saturday. I don't remember what I put it out there. You got me um, and YouTube. We're going to put these out on YouTube, too. So, yes. You, too, is going to be on the show? Yes, you, too. <laughs> and by you, too, I mean you, too, can be on the show. Oh, not for yeah. the streets have no name, you, too? No. Right. I'm sorry. No. All right, another good show. We appreciate you listening. So if you have anything to tell us, you have the numbers and the in the info. So find us. Yes, please let us know. We're going to try to get this out to as many people because hopefully we're going to have a lot of really great topics that we are going to talk about. Um, like like you said, like wigs, wig care, um, uh, like how to handle treatments, um, how to handle some of the side effects, 
uh, possibly like massage therapy, infrared therapy. Um, a lot of people have issues with their teeth and their bones after cancer care. There's so many aspects of it that we're going to be touching on, not just like the personal side of us, but like actual experts. We'll talk with the actual experts about, you know, what, right. what, what you can do in these various topics. So the experts can be you if we're you sponsor experts. it. Skincare. Whatever. We're experts. Uh, on on what we've gone through but oh. i hope to get like estheticians or experts to talk about like actual like what to do for skincare like your skin gets super dry when you're going through treatment or even after i haven't had chemo in a year over a year and i still am just a scaly bitch i am wow. so scaly I just cannot get enough water in my system and enough lotion on my body. I have wow. car lotion. I have office lotion. I'm like a teenage boy. I have car lotion. I have office lotion. I have bathroom lotion. I have living room slash kitchen lotion. I have wow. lotion and chapstick in every Everywhere? nook and cranny of my house. Yeah. Is a uh, is scaly bitch. Was that one by Buck Cherry? Did they do that one? <laughs> Scaly bitch. Hey, you're scaly bitch. <laughs> Sorry. I had to. It was there. It was there on the T, and I just had to. Oh. All that right. would be a good parody, though. Work on it that. Would be. You're, you're a scaly yeah. bitch. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we used to be king and she queen looked, of parodies. You look so good. I can't resist. <laughs> hey, fishing, you're a scaly fish, bitch. Fishing you all night. <laughs> Okay, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for tuning in today. You've been listening to Cancer Convos with Brady and Stacy. Thanks for listening to Cancer Convos with Brady and Stacy, sponsored by. Oh, we don't have any. If you're interested in sponsoring our podcast, you can email Stacy at urlradio.net. That's S T A C Y at urlradio.net. This podcast is available on all major streaming platforms, including Spotify and iTunes, and also the free URL radio app. Remember, cancer is a word, not a sentence. <laughs>